100 points combined in back-to-back -back G League games earned my fellow Torontonian Nick Stauskas a two-year contract in Boston. Rookie man in charge Ime Udoka was coach of the month in February, while the team's starting center in Robert Williams III is coming off a stat-stuffing game where he posted 10 points, 12 boards, 3 dimes, 3 steals, and 3 blocks, while his partner in the front court in Al Horford had a throwback game for the ages. Jason Tatum scored 24 fourth quarter points to close out the Grizzlies, while Marcus Smart showed off his shooting guard best clamps. Beantown's taken 10 consecutive W's against plus 500 teams, and are now just two games back of the Eastern Conference's second seed. The Boston Celtics have become a lot more powerful, not only with the signings of Stauskas and the deadline acquisitions of Derek White and the second-time Celtic Daniel Tice, but their continuity 1-15 through 15 has also vamped significantly. Stay tuned for the details on all that and more regarding the NBA franchise that's tied for the most total championships. Right quick, only 11.9% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. Boston may be on fire, but as a general manager, you never want to get complacent, and Brad Stevens may have shored up the C's biggest weakness with a solid buyout market cop. While the Celtics are right behind the Golden State Warriors with the second best defensive rating in basketball, they're down at number 17 in offensive rating and number 22 in three-point percentage. The University of Michigan alum and lottery pick of 2014's draft is a veteran journeyman who, between the minors and pros, has signed with nine different NBA organizations. Stauskas also spent 40 games overseas in the EuroLeague. In terms of 2022 season, the Nuggets signed Nick back on October 16th of 2021, but waived him later that day, and Stauskas would join Denver's G League team in the Grand Rapids Gold as an affiliate player. December 31st of 2021 saw the Miami Heat sign Stauskas to a hardship exception contract, but he received just 24 minutes over two games of playing time before the 10-day expired. To the Canadian's credit, his time in South Beach did see him make 50% of his three-point field goals, albeit on just two of four attempts. Nick's built up a reputation as being a player that every team wants, but nobody keeps. But considering his recent dominant stretch in the minors, the man deserved to get a fair shake at the highest level. In his 14 G League games this year, Stauskas averaged 26 points, 5.9 rebounds, and 4.8 assists on 51.4% shooting from the field and a blistering hot 46.6% from three-point range, while attempting 8.4 of those deep-range bombs per game. I gave credit to the first-year GM of Beantown earlier, but when he was a coach, Brad Stevens' coach teams would have massive third-quarter lapses, but under Ime Udoka, it's been much different in 21-22. When Udoka was asked about what he says to the team at halftime, he jokingly responded with, you have the coach of the month in there. That was said with a laugh, and the truth is, Ime's far too humble to take any credit. He's quick to call out his players, but quicker to call out himself. Becoming a potential Coach of the Year candidate, Ime Udoka's done an incredible job managing the vibe in the locker room, managing the offensive system, and keeping his players motivated. Thursday saw the Boston Celtics pick up one of their more impressive wins of the year, taking down the Red Hot Grizz 120-107. The Seas kept the Grizz under 110 points, marking the first time Memphis failed to reach that mark since January 23rd. The night was highlighted by a fourth quarter duel between Jason Tatum and John Morant as both guys finished with 30 plus point games. But in the end, it was Jason Tatum who walked away looking like the man as the Seas took the dub. After the game, Tatum was asked about what Boston's last two wins tell him about the team, saying we're trending in the right direction and especially at this time of the year, just trying to find the way to be the best versions of ourselves going into the playoffs. Boston went down by as much as 17 against Atlanta, but they managed to mount a massive second half comeback to grind out a W, taking into account the W over Memphis as well, and they've been gelling nicely as a unit lately, despite dealing with multiple injuries, most significantly to Jalen Brown. As I mentioned in the intro, Ime Udoka took home coach of the month, leading the Celtics to a 9-2 February. The Celtics are making some serious progress as a team, and when asked about that progression, Tatum pointed out two things, health and shot making, saying, we went through some growing pains, new team, new staff, things like that, dealing with COVID, 
guys were injured. I didn't hit no shots. Guys stopped getting COVID. We got healthy and I started making some shots and we've really been playing a lot better as a unit because we've just had more time together. Tatum's three point percentages haven't gone up much in the past couple months, but he's been able to earn his points in other ways. His field goal percentage since the start of 2022 is at 45.9%. Compared to the 41.7% he shot up to that point. Alongside Boston's newfound team chemistry is their ability to enjoy themselves. Tatum said that the team's been having a lot more fun lately, a luxury they didn't have at the beginning of the year. Jason said, watching us now, we play with a lot more passion. We just seem like we're having a lot more fun. Obviously, when you're winning, you tend to play a little more enthused with a smile, a laugh, things like that. It wasn't happening too often at the beginning of the season. Tatum also made sure to credit the Celtics' entire defense as the main factor behind their recent success, but he also doubled down on how crucial having fun is. Quote, defense, everybody being locked in, just having fun. This is basketball at the end of the day. It's supposed to be a lot of fun, and we've been having a lot of fun lately. JT dropped his 20th 30-plus point game this year, but minus Jalen Brown, who's out with a minor sprain in his right ankle, Marcus Smart stepped up with 18 points and 12 assists. In Smart's last 19 games, the Celtics are 17-2, outscoring teams by 16.6 points per game in that span. Smart's averaging 12.3 points, 3.7 boards, 5.6 dimes, 45% from the field, 38% from deep. The Celtics are the number one team in the NBA in defensive rating and also the number one team in net rating. Most shockingly in their win against Memphis, it was Al Horford coming through when fans in Boston needed him most. For all the talk about throwback centers being a thing of the past and big men needing to offer more than a physical presence and low post game, Horford has found the perfect balance. One minute, he's cooking you with old school post moves, and the next, he's dropping a three in your face from the perimeter. In 40 minutes, Horford tallied 21 points, 15 boards, five dimes, and two blocks on eight for 16 shooting from the field, while spacing the floor out with four triples. What's the key for a deep 2022 Celtics playoff run? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st. Receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is TJ Views, who says John Morant should be an MVP candidate given the breakout season he's having this year. He's helping the Memphis Grizzlies to the third seed in the West, which will help the team out. I like how he finds ways to get better, like improving his three-point shot. He definitely has a bright future in this league. Appreciate every tremendous take. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.